The views expressed in this blog are hosted on my own website, are strictly personal and do not reflect the views of any organization. Hello and welcome once again to Straight Bat, my weekly video blog, where as the title suggests, I comment with a straight bat. Let me say something at the very outset today that might raise a few eyebrows. It isn't easy being an Indian Muslim in today's India. That's right. The Indian Muslim is facing a real predicament. Why do I say that? Because considering that we have one of the largest Muslim populations in the world, there will be those out there who will say, this is a strange thing to say, are you playing on a sense of Muslim victimhood? Well, not quite. The fact is, we live in a world, a socio-political universe in particular, where the Indian Muslim finds himself or herself on constant trial. There is a terror attack in Jammu and Kashmir, the Indian Muslim or the Kashmiri Muslim in particular will find it difficult to get uh, a place to rent out. There is uh, the Tabliki Jamaat which is accused of violating COVID protocol norms and the Indian Muslim will be on the radar to the point where Muslim vegetable vendors will be ostracized in some parts of the country. Uh, some imam will issue a bizarre fatwa somewhere and the next thing you know is every Muslim in the country has to bear the cross. A Kerala Muslim is found to have uh, joined the Islamic State and suddenly every Muslim in the country will be demonized. The latest example of what can be described only as this rising or increasing Islamophobia is uh, being witnessed again with the return of the Taliban to power in Afghanistan. The return of the radical Islamic militia in that country has led to a frenzy of strong opinion, especially on social media, as if to suggest that the Taliban alone represent the real face of Islam, the violent barbarism which uh, has often been uh, which often the group is accused of, and certainly there are enough examples in the past, is a sign, they say, that Islam is essentially a medieval religion of terror and bigotry. Underlying this narrative which is being put out is an attempt to portray every Indian Muslim in some way as being part of a global brotherhood of Islamic terror. Truth, my friends, is that this narrative is just as dangerous, if not more dangerous at times, than the Taliban's ascent to power. Make no mistake, the Taliban are a cruel feudal force who have made violence their credo. They have committed the most heinous crimes in the past against their fellow Afghans, especially against women. The good versus bad Taliban narrative in my view is imaginary and frankly even bogus and let me tell you i recall a meeting uh, many years ago 2000 2001 before 9 11 i was in peshawar in, on the border on the park afghan border and uh, i managed to interview uh, a few of the taliban spokespersons who were based at that time in uh, in peshawar and uh, it was all very nice. They offered me sharbat and snacks, uh, asked me about uh, New Delhi. And then I started to probe them about their acts of violence, about their involvement with terror, indeed about their attitudes towards women, about the Sharia law that they were forcibly imposing on women in the area. And soon they asked me to switch off the camera and started accusing me of being an Indian agent. The press conference in Kabul this week may have given an impression that we now have a new Taliban, which is more inclusive, which is in a way more open to scrutiny, more diverse. Trust me, my friends, fear and intimidation are never far away in a Taliban-ruled society where the gun prevails. 
women in particular are soft targets. The Taliban plain and simply are bad news for modern democratic societies that cherish and value their liberal ethos. But what does any of this have to do with Indian Islam, I ask? Or indeed, why should every Indian Muslim, crucially, have to bear the cross of the Taliban's excesses? Are we saying today that when a Bajrang Dal mob targets a Muslim and parades him on the street as recently happened in Kanpur, every Hindu in India has to, in a way, bear the cross for the Bajrang Dal's acts? Are we saying that when a mob asks a Muslim to forcibly chant Jai Shri Ram, every Hindu in this country is going to be put in the dock and be seen as bigoted and intolerant? Okay, there is a Samajwadi Muslim MP who today has spoken out in favor of the Taliban. There is someone who is an All India Muslim Personal Law Board spokesperson who may have hailed the return of the Taliban. But do these individuals become spokespersons for an entire community running into millions of people? By that logic, when a, a Sakshi Maharaj or a Vinay Khatiar uh, launch out with their incendiary rhetoric, are we saying that they are spokespersons for all Hindus? The point I want to make, and here I agree in a way with actor Swara Bhaskar, who in a tweet says, and let me quote from her tweet, we can't be okay with Hindutva terror and all be shocked and devastated at Taliban terror. And we can't be all chill with Taliban terror and then be all indignant with Hindutva terror. Our humanitarian and ethical values should not be based on the identity of the oppressor or the oppressed. Now, I do not seek to quote this to try and build some kind of an equivalence between Islamic terror and Hindutva terror groups in their scale and intensity. That would be a false, erroneous equivalence in my view. What I do strongly believe, and this is the focus of my straight back today, is that those who point fingers at the Taliban for their intolerance must ensure that they too come to the debate with clean hands. That they are not the forces who today are going to forcibly enforce love jihad in India and then question the Taliban for their alleged intolerance. When in this country, at times it appears that there is a deliberate attempt to build prejudice against Indian Muslims for securing vote banks, then what right do those individuals have to take the moral high ground today and claim to be the flag bearers of, uh, of modern values when they espouse hate and division? Moral positions, my friends, can be taken by those who consistently base them on values and not on identities, on liberal values not on religious identities. Let's get it clear. It is not just for the Indian Muslim to speak out against the atrocities or the attempts by the Taliban to in a way create a medieval society. It is the responsibility of every citizen, of every citizen who values humanity above all else to call for an end to all forms of violence and hatred and reaffirm this commitment to constitutional values. Instead of using Islamophobia as some kind of a weapon to further ghettoize and target a community, this is a moment to build bridges, to recognize the importance of having a modern secular education, to stress on the need to go beyond religious laws like the Sharia and find a universalism in our constitutional values above all else. I know this is not easy. I am reminded, in fact, of a Salman Khan movie dialogue, Bajrangi Bhai Jaan. Nafrat failana bahut asan hai, pyar baatna bahut mushkil. Very easy to spread hatred, very difficult to spread love in our society. And let's not also forget, that while the Taliban are seeking to turn the clock back 
in Afghanistan, there are many incredibly brave Afghan men, youth and women, especially women, who have been raising their voice against the militia. It is those voices, my friends, who today deserve our support more than ever before. As Indian citizens, we perhaps can't influence the course of events in a country like Afghanistan. But as citizens of the world, we must stand up for a value system that rejects hate and violence. Then whether that politics of hatred is taking place in our own locality, our own neighborhood, or whether it's taking place in distant Afghanistan, we must stand up for what is right, irrespective of our community identities. Think about it. That was the straight bat. Thanks for watching. Do of course log in, subscribe to my YouTube channel for many more such videos. For now, stay well, stay safe. Namaskar.